Hi everyone. This video is first in an ongoing series where we explore Auxil's capabilities. In this particular video, we'll introduce Auxil's key concepts and demonstrate how they can make us more effective when we work with APIs. I've opened up a project that contains a few API calls for my new recipe app. There's an endpoint that returns all recipes, an endpoint that returns a single recipe, and an endpoint that returns the image for a given recipe. I can run everything at once, or just run a selection. Select and run any combination of nodes without selecting the links. All generated output will automatically be shown on the right. Let's take a closer look at the endpoint that returns a single recipe. The request node defines our endpoint URL, or HTTP method, and provides inputs for headers, parameters, and payloads. Auxil lets you choose between several different ways to handle a request. I can connect a request to a WebSocket or open it in an integrated web browser. We'll explore these options further in a subsequent video. In this case, I have connected my request to a client that performs a basic HTTP request. You can tightly control what gets included in the output. Right now, we're only interested in our client's status and payload results. I've also captured some of the results for later reference or to use our values in subsequent nodes. More on that later. We'll set up the API call that adds a new recipe. We'll need a request, a client, and something that can hold the payload. When we're dragging a link between ports, the port helper will show if it's compatible. I can also use the right mouse button on the port as a shortcut to quickly add and link up compatible nodes. Our service expects a JSON body that defines the new recipe to be sent. I've pre-populated the document node with our recipe template and saved it as a snippet. I'll add it, connect it as a payload for our request, and fill in the details for our new recipe. I'll also fill in the URL of our endpoint, set our request to post, and connect our outlets of interest to the output. We are now ready to post it. Environment variables are specific to your project and can be used almost anywhere you can enter text in Auxil. Access them by selecting Manage in the top left dropdown. For our recipe app, we have set up a development and a test server. I want my project to be able to distinguish between these servers, so I have added separate configurations for them. We'll update our request nodes to use the server environment variable. I can now switch between my configurations and target the preferred environment. Many, if not most nodes, have an auxiliary port. This means they can use values from the output of other nodes. This concept enables powerful combinations of nodes and allows us to create intricate chains to support any API flow. Let's take a look at a few simple examples. I've connected a collection node containing some credentials to a signer node. I can use any value from the collection directly in my signer. Autocomplete makes it convenient to find and insert these values. I can also use any JSON response as auxiliary input. Here, I've captured a result from my recipe API. To use its recipe identifier in a subsequent request, I'll connect it to the auxiliary port of the request itself. The identifier will automatically show up in the autocomplete dialog.
I can connect an arbitrary number of nodes to the AUX port and formulate entirely new payloads from its inputs. Let's put this into practice. I've added an endpoint that uploads an image to use as a banner for our recipe. It connects a file node to a put request that requires the identifier of the recipe to be in its route. Let's upload an image for our chicken recipe and see if we can retrieve it. Now when I add a new recipe, I would like to add its image in one go instead of doing multiple calls. We can chain the call that creates the recipe to the call that uploads the image. First, I'll connect a document node to the payload of the client. It will capture the result of the request and it will allow us to conveniently use its values in subsequent nodes. I'll copy both the add recipe and upload image calls to some free space on the canvas. I'll label this node to be a little bit more descriptive. Now when I connect it to the auxiliary port of our image upload request, I can use the identifier of the recipe as an auxiliary value. For good measure, we'll also chain the call that displays the image. Let's take a look at the completed result. Now, when we select and run these nodes, a recipe gets created, then an image for that recipe is uploaded, and finally, the image for the recipe is retrieved and displayed in the console along with the created recipe. There is much more to discover. In the next video, we'll cover some more advanced uses. Thank you for watching. Enjoy using Oxl, and I'll see you next time.